Back in May 2015, David Hole took his metal detector and went looking for gold. He picked the perfect spot for it. Mayborough near Melbourne, Australia was the top location down under during the gold rush in the 19th century. The detector beeped, showing there was something precious hiding in the ground. David found a very heavy reddish rock with a weird, dimpled surface resting in some yellow clay. As it turned out later, the find was, indeed, priceless, but only for science. David took the rock home, hoping he'd be able to open it and find a gold nugget inside. He tried a rock saw, an angle grinder, and a drill, and put the rock in acid. Nothing worked. Not even a sledgehammer did the job. A couple of years later, he decided to take the rock to Melbourne Museum and finally find out what it really was. It turned out it was a meteorite, and a rare one. The geologist working at the museum was over the moon, as after years of looking at thousands of rocks that people had thought to be meteorites, he finally got his hands on the real thing. The space origin of the rock explained why it was so unusually heavy. It contained dense forms of iron and nickel, and those guys weigh a lot. And it got its dimpled surface because it started melting when it plunged through Earth's atmosphere. Scientists named the meteorite Maribro after the place where it was found and used a diamond saw to study it better. They sliced off a sliver of the space rock and saw some tiny crystallized droplets of metallic minerals throughout it. Those minerals formed during the early years of our solar system. It means the space guest was around 4.6 billion years old. The researchers are still not quite sure where the meteorite came from or how long it's been on Earth, but they've got some guesses. Our solar system used to be a swirling mix of dust and chondrite rocks. Gravity did its thing and formed planets, but there were some leftovers, and most of them ended up in a massive asteroid belt. The Mabro meteorite likely took a detour from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It got bumped out of there by asteroids crashing into each other, and one fine day, it decided to crash into Earth. Carbon dating says that this space rock has been chilling on Earth for somewhere between 100 and 1,000 years. There were meteorite sightings in the 19th century that could match up with when it made its grand entrance. The scientists say the Mabro meteorite is even rarer than gold. It's only the 17th meteorite ever found in the Australian state of Victoria and the second largest. In the 80s, David Mazurik from Michigan decided to buy a farm not far from Mount Pleasant. The new property came with a weird bonus, a large rock that kept the barn door open. The farmer explained the rock was a meteorite. It had literally fallen from the sky in the 30s. The farmer and his father found the crater the meteorite had left and dug out their guest from space, which was still warm. They couldn't think of a better use for it than to serve as a doorstop. I mean, what else can you do with a meteorite? The new owner got to keep the unconventional doorstop and must have grown fond of it. When he was moving to a new home, he took the rock with him and used it for the same purpose for another 30 years. Sometimes David will let his kids take it to school. It must have gotten some easy A's in physics and astronomy. Then, he heard that other Michigan residents find and sell pieces of meteorites for some serious cash. Since his piece was an impressive 22 pounds, he decided to take it to Central Michigan University to find out its value. A local geology professor was getting tired of similar requests because, for around 18 years, she had to explain to people all the rocks they had brought her weren't meteorites at all. But this time, she felt it was the real thing. She tested the rock and determined it was a meteorite made from iron and nickel. It turned out to be the sixth largest recorded find of this kind in Michigan, and the most valuable specimen she's ever worked with. They sent a slice for another round of verification to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., and soon it was all official. It turned out that the meteorite was a piece of an early solar system. The Smithsonian and a museum in Maine offered some good money for the space rock. Mazurik decided to sell his meteorite to Michigan State University's Abrams Planetarium for $75,000.
he generously shared 10% of the money with Central Michigan University's Earth and Atmospheric Sciences Department, where they confirmed the rock's true identity. I hope the money he was left with was enough to buy a new doorstop. In a dumpster on the street corner where your building is located, you find a big white bag. The type you would have to denounce if you were at an airport. It's suspicious and, oh no, there's something moving inside of it. You dare to approach it, carefully of course. You want to open it, but decide it's better to do it with a long stick. So that's what you decide to do, only to find out that inside it, there are over 10 live coiled snakes. I mean, who throws away a bag of snakes? Even if the situation is a big security hazard, it happened several years ago in England. Well, that was shocking. But you came out of it with all your fingers, so that's a win. Further down the street, you spot another live animal running around all by itself. It's a chicken this time. You look around to see if you can find its owner, but the chicken seems to be completely on its own. What is this supposed to be? A remake of the Chicken Run movie? Or is this what they call a free-range chicken in city areas? Now, if you guessed this was real, you guessed right. It also happened in England, where a CCTV camera caught footage of this weird event. Now, if you want to multiply that by millions, then check out the island of Oahu in Hawaii, where fabulous flocks of feral chickens roam around the place free as a bird. Meanwhile, you approach a part of the town that's neighbored by a small forest and decide to explore a bit. You don't come here much, so everything is kind of a surprise. You come to the first figure that makes you a little scared. I mean, is this supposed to be Groot from Guardian of the Galaxy? It sure looks like the keeper of the forest, or at least someone put these branches together to look like this. But it's just a natural phenomenon. I guess Mother Nature also likes to engage in some art making, huh? Moving past the forest guardian, you run into what looks like a small mountain of something. But what could it be? Is it made out of clay? You approach it more and more until the blob starts to reveal itself more clearly. You can't believe what you're seeing. These are hundreds of hills of pasta. Pasta! That delicious Italian dish that almost everyone in the world loves. How could someone throw this crazy amount of pasta away? Judging by your last encounter, you thought this was nature-made as well. But probably some restaurant made too much spaghetti and threw it away after it went bad. This fact may be disturbing, but it happened in real life. On the outskirts of New Jersey, someone did run into a hundred little pasta hills. The mystery of how the pasta got there still remains. The pasta incident made your heart break a little, but you continue on your walk. And that's when you find an old abandoned house. It looks like nobody has been here for a very long time. You see the usual stuff an abandoned house has. A ripped-up couch, some pots and pans scattered on the floor, old pieces of cloth hanging around. But the surprise lies on the basement floor. Once you go down, you're completely caught off guard when you see a huge water tank with something swimming inside of it. Oh my, can that really be a shark? Yup. And her name is Rosie. Recently, an urban explorer went to check out an abandoned wildlife amusement park in Australia and found Rosie in a tank. She hadn't been alive for years, but how bizarre is that? Professional storage hunting is really quite a gig these days. It's drawn a lot of attention from people all around the world, too, since there are many TV shows focused on it. But it's not just storage hunters that can hit the jackpot with their findings. One couple from Arizona simply wanted a couch, but they weren't willing to buy a new one or pay a lot of money for it. So they participated in an auction, where they made a $10 offer for an old couch. Since that piece of furniture wasn't in the best shape, they ended up purchasing the couch and the container it came in. When going through the storage unit, they had the best surprise. They found an old teddy bear filled with cash. That little toy ended up bringing them about $300,000. In 2011, another man came across an interesting discovery of his own after he examined the contents of a storage locker in San Fernando Valley. What he stumbled upon was a special comic book called Action Comics No. 1. The man didn't really know how valuable his finding was until he took it to an expert for further evaluation. Turned out, the comic book was actually the first one featuring Superman. 
But as much as he wanted to profit from it, the man had to give it back to the previous owner. The story goes that the comic book was stolen from a famous actor, who was himself really passionate about comics and Superman in particular. The actor had reported the book as missing to his insurance company and authorities, but it couldn't be found. The comic book, estimated to be worth somewhere around $1 million, reunited with its rightful owner 11 years after it had been stolen. Another incredible vintage object was found in a storage unit in Melbourne, Australia. It was a 1927 Harley-Davidson 8-valve racer with a sidecar. Based on experts' opinion, this fascinating vehicle had been sitting there for over half a century before resurfacing in 2015. It went for sale pretty soon afterwards and was purchased for a whopping $470,000. Some auctions for abandoned storage units are fun just because you have no idea what you're going to find in there. And that's regardless of how much profit you'll end up making. It's the story of a couple from Long Island that spent only $100 on the best thing they'd ever purchased. Hidden inside their mystery unit was a custom 1976 Lotus Esprit Sport. Not only was this car special because of its design, but it was also the car that was used in the 1977 James Bond movie, The Spy Who Loved Me. At first, the couple had no idea the car was a famous one, so they just looked at how they could fix it so they could continue using it. I mean, it did look pretty cool. After they took it to a repair shop, they found out that there was something special about the vehicle. Soon enough, they discovered where it came from and ended up selling it at an auction in 2013. The price? A mind-boggling $997,000. Another person from Southern California found something incredible in an abandoned storage unit back in 2017. His locker ended up filled with vintage videos, game hardware, and game cartridges. After he took them for evaluation, he found out that his findings were worth over $50,000. In 2010, another person paid just $275 for a large storage unit that seemed to be filled with simple salon supplies. But after looking closely, the person discovered a hidden object that ended up being worth a lot a 1928 Marshall and Wendell Salesman piano. After further evaluation, the price of the musical instrument was estimated somewhere between $10,000 and $12,000. Space technology and a forgotten storage unit? This unit was auctioned off in Florida. After inspecting it, the owner realized it contained a NASA rocket and a countdown clock. Apparently, those were put into storage after the program they were supposed to be used in had been discontinued. The finding became so famous that it even made it on TV. It's rare when old finds in the house have any value, but this married couple managed to win the jackpot. In Cleveland, Ohio, they started making home repairs. The man was tearing dusty boards from the ceiling in the basement when he noticed something behind bars. It was a small green suitcase. He found the second one in another part of the basement. At first, the husband and wife thought the suitcase contained some old baseball cards, but instead, they found a treasure worth 33,000 pounds. There were old banknotes, and some of them were very rare. They were delighted with this find, but didn't spend money on entertainment. According to the man, they used the cash to pay off their mortgage. These people were even luckier. Several residents of a small English town in North Yorkshire were doing repairs in the house, they discovered one of the largest hordes of 18th century English gold coins ever found in Great Britain. The owners removed a small clay cup the size of a soda can, hidden in the concrete under the floorboards. The bowl's surface was covered with a thin layer of salt, and inside, there were about 260 gold coins. The estimated value of the entire treasure was about $200,000. But it all depends on the auction. Perhaps the amount will reach half a million. One user came to his mom's new multi-apartment building. He went to the basement and found a huge bank vault there. There was this round, thick metal door leading to the bank safe. He didn't find any money or gold, but the vault was in excellent condition. Of course, other Reddit users found out how this could happen. If a bank goes bankrupt, it takes all its belongings from the building except for a giant safe. The fact is that dismantling such an object requires huge costs. 
it can't be removed without expensive equipment, so banks leave their safes in the building. Another Reddit user wrote that a law firm bought a closed bank building and turned the vault into an office. They couldn't break through a thick wall in this room to install a window, so they just hung a photo with a window. Another user showed a rather creepy discovery made in the basement of his house. It was a huge hole leading into the darkness and filled with cold liquid. The user didn't panic and measured the pit. It was only 8 feet deep, half filled with ordinary water. He didn't find anything else, no secret room or dungeon. In fact, this was not just a pit, but a particular well called a cistern. And again, thanks to Reddit users for the answer. In the past, people installed such things in many homes to replenish water supplies. Cisterns were popular in dry areas where residents couldn't access a water supply system, or when people were afraid that a river or reservoir was polluted. They collected rainwater and stored it in these wells. To avoid contamination from the surrounding soil, they cemented these pits. People used water for house cleaning, showering, and laundry. You could even install filters in such a tank to drink clean water. This user found something strange not in his house, but in the basement of the office where he worked, in a dark, concrete room. Among the junk, he saw a red iron door leading into the unknown. Keep closed at all times, was written on its cold surface. There were no locks or keyholes on it, only bolts. The user could have easily opened it, but didn't. Would you dare? The thing was actually not scary at all, but it was pretty dangerous. This is transformer storage with a powerful electrical voltage inside. It can explode or catch fire or even electrocute someone. Therefore, it was placed in the basement away from people. No one except electricians is allowed to go there. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.